resistance at, uh, let's say, resistance is, uh, I'm going to make the R low. So I'm going to make it R 4 ohms. And my inductor, I'll use this for my inductor. It's a, it's a bigger inductor, right? It's in millihenries. So I'll hook up a circuit. Oh, let me bring a multimeter. So I'll hook, hook up a multimeter to it now, and I'll put it in uh, uh, amp mode so it can uh, read current. I'll hook it up to the, uh, the inductor. I'll put this at about 8 volts. I'll put it on amps here and maybe let me get a stopwatch so we could do a little timing and I'll hook it up this is turned on point three six four point three six point three five three So as you can see here, the reading on the current is going uh, down. What was the initial current? I said 0.36. Four. Okay, so I'm just going to measure now how many seconds it takes to get to 0.3 uh, amps. Uh, 67 seconds. Okay. Okay, so in 67 seconds,
the current went from uh, uh, 0 0.364 to 0 0.300 amps. So according to our equation there, let's see, the current should be, let me see here, the current should be Let me get the resist. The inductor is high hot actually now if you touch it. So actually, that doesn't make sense. Huh? The current seems to be going down based on that. According to our equation, it should be going up. Now here, uh, let me see here. What should the time constant of that be? L over R. Okay, what was the L of that blue one that we measured? About 13.7 millihenries, right? And the R, I tried to put it on a low resistor so that uh, if the R was much bigger, the time constant would be really too short. So the, I put it on 4 originally. Ah, here's what happened. No matter, even if I use the small uh, resistor, the time constant was uh, 3 milliseconds. It wasn't noticeable by an experiment that I can time. You see? So here's what happened. As soon as I hooked it up, the thing just charged up immediately. Phew. Right? So its maximum current that it charged up to was 3.6 for uh, amps. But then why did it keep going down? Remember I was measuring in 67 seconds, uh, I final was 0.3 amps. So what was that effect? Because the inductor is also a resistor. It's a wire, right? It's coil. It's got some of its own internal resistance. What was happening to the inductor? I told you as I touched it, it got hot. The resistance of the inductor was increasing after it got the current because its temperature was increasing, right? It got hot. So if its temperature increases, resistance increases, the current of the circuit drops as a result of it heating. So what I was measuring was not the time, the actual time constant. The thing charged up like really immediately. So in order to really prove the formula, you need somehow a way of uh, measuring a time constant that's in the milliseconds. So that's, we get, that's what we're going to do this Thursday in our lab. We're going to hook this up to an oscilloscope. Because the oscilloscope can measure any time constant, very short time constants. So you can't do it with just timing, you see. Unless I had a very small resistor. But I don't want to have a very small resistor because the current is going to be really high, you see. So the only way to do really prove this is uh, uh, oscilloscope. So that's cool. It's good, 